Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. I uh, just got back from Collingwood. I've got so much footage to look through. Before I dive into all that work, I just wanted to make a quick update video. I feel like I've been improving a lot recently. One thing that I've been struggling with for a very long time is good audio. So I just got the GoPro Media Mod and a Rode Lavalier mic. Hopefully this is gonna improve the audio. Anyways, let's check it out. Setup is pretty simple. Detach the side door. Open the media mod, which is a little tricky I find, there we go, and simply slide the GoPro into place. Flip it over on the other side, and you have a mini HDMI, and in the center we've got a Type-C for power pass-through. More importantly, what I'm looking for is the audio jack. So I went with the Rode Lavadier Go mic, and it just simply plugs in right here. Now we do have to make a couple changes in the settings, we're going to swipe down. Go over to preferences, scroll down to mods. The media mod has been connected as a standard microphone. So we're just gonna go for a quick walk around, test the microphone out. I just want an idea of what it sounds like. We'll see what the crunching sounds like and what my voice sounds like over the crunching. I don't have any special settings on the GoPro, no raw audio or anything like that. I don't know if that would make a big difference or not. So, sounds like construction's going heavy up this way. I don't hear any birds. That'll definitely give the microphone a test of the, what it picks up all around it. All right, starting to breathe heavy. <laughs> we'll see what that sounds like. Hey, those are grass prints again. Grass prints. 100%. I know me some grass prints. Lots of tracks in the snow right now. Hi. Now my GoPro isn't waterproof, I don't think. Oh, I hear some birds. There's an exposed microphone jack on it. The door, the um, waterproofing door is taken off. All right, well, let's get the camera out and see if we can get a few photos. And the birds are gone. They came to check me out for a second while I was getting set up. But uh, I still see them flying around up ahead. These birds might not be too shy with all that noise happening. Looks like they're all right over here. I have my settings all weird from the last time I was taking photos. Focus area. I like tracking spot. It seems to work well for me. And then bird eye tracking on. Maybe what I'll do here, I will also open up the Sony app so I can connect to it. And uh, that way you guys can see what's happening from another perspective. The birds are all right in front of me right now. I need to to get taking photos. I'm missing opportunities. There's one, like, I, I'm not gonna try and point, but he's right there. Okay, so now that you guys can see, there was birds literally right there. Oh, there's one. Oh, this guy's being cute. It's not quite catching the eye. It's a little harsh lighting, I guess, but Bird butt, bird butt. Hey, it caught the eye for a second there. Oh, that guy's posing. I want to see him. Ah, oh, wasn't quick enough. This guy's still chilling there. Oh, he's fit. He's eating something. He got a seed. I'm trying F8 to see if images are sharper because I keep hearing things about that. Apparently, um, with consumer grade lenses, like, you know, mid range lenses, F8 is supposed to be the sweet spot for a lot of them. So just giving it a try. It's gonna drive my F stop, my uh, ISO up a lot, but I'm gonna process these images in DxO denoise and then just kind of see if they, they seem a lot sharper. But there's all kinds of chickadees here right now. They're all around, which is pretty cool. Hopefully this is all recording still on my iPhone. I wanna show you guys the perspective of actually taking all the photos and uh, the autofocus. Oh, I disconnected. Bummer. How much did you guys actually see? It disconnected instantly. That's, well, I wonder if I got any good chickadee photos. Oh, wow. That seems really sharp. And this was F8. The ISO doesn't look too high either. Yeah, this whole F8 thing, we'll see. That might've worked out. Well, I'm having fun with this. What a simple little idea just to come out and quickly test this all out. I'm trying very hard to not let the, uh, <laughs> that lost recording bum me out. 
there were so many cute moments that I didn't actually get to take a photo of because I was too slow fiddling around and whatnot. And uh, you guys would have seen it from the viewfinder even though I wasn't taking photos. Ah, noisy. But are these trees not perfect for an owl? Uh, it, this was all supposed to be a subdivision, which is exactly what's going on right next to us. So over the last few years, well, over COVID basically, like the very start of COVID was when I got into wildlife photography. And so when I was first getting into it and exploring all these woods, the, uh, the construction site next to us was very small. Oh, that chickadee just swooped by. So the construction site was really small and there wasn't a lot to it. Um, I had seen foxes, coyotes, different types of owls, a short-eared owl, a snowy owl, a barred owl, which the barred owl, of course, is still here. Um, you get all kinds of herons and sandpipers, just huge diversity of wildlife. And I've unfortunately just been watching that shrink and shrink and shrink. So. It is time for me to find new woods to explore because this is definitely starting to make it more and more difficult for me to find wildlife. It's just, these are the trails I taught myself how to take photos on. These are the trails that taught me how to look for certain animals and it's, it's just a bummer. Man, this is loud. Sorry for bringing you guys this way. I'm doing this like, this just pouring my heart out there. <laughs> <laughs> and all you can hear is bang, bang. Hey, but maybe that sells exactly what I'm telling you, right? Development, it just comes in and destroys everything.